<laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Hello. Happy New Year. New Year. Um, <laughs> ah, Julia is doing me a, a very big favour today in the recording because my iPad was not playing ball. I don't know why, but I'll look at it later and we'll see. It's probably something really easy. <laughs> Um, but uh, yes, coming at you from the 2nd of January, 2023. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Craziness. That'll this will probably be out um, towards the end of the month. And this will be episode either six or seven of the Free Flow podcast, depending on some possible yeah. editing slash relevance of, <laughs> of episode six, where the mm-hmm. few things all become clear. Um, and today we're going to be exploring crossover days also known as transition days. Um, And before we leap in, shall we do a little cycle check-in? Yes. (laughs) That's like the word. What word is it? (laughs) Do you know what (laughs) save your cycle you're on? Yes, I have my book. I'm prepared Oh, well done. Um, Yeah, so I'm on day four today. Um, So I'm kind of, I guess I'm on a transition day. It's kind of from winter to spring at the moment Mm. kind of emerging from my little egg yes (laughs) the egg the wintry egg egg. um peeping out hello world um (laughs) so how are you um i'm on cycle day eight so i am kind of yeah so i'm sort of potentially a little bit going into to summer I don't quite feel in summer I feel maybe a bit more springy so I'm not I'm not too I'd say maybe more spring I don't think I'm quite on a crossover day I think I'm maybe more springy um yeah so (laughs) a little bit um I'm slightly brain foggy today but I think I just think I just didn't I didn't think I got a good quality sleep so I don't think that's to do with where I'm at my cycle normally this is quite nice time for me because it's um I do, I've got like nice focus, but it's not all of the like mm. estrogen and everything else where I'm like, ah, you know, chaotic summer energy. So, um, yeah. yeah, so it's quite an interesting time. Um, and I was kind of thinking, Julia, actually, um, this 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 theme today that we're kind of covering of crossover days and we'll, we'll touch a little bit on, on crossover seasons as well. But as I was writing my notes, I was like, oh, this is like, this is the time now where we're at in January, because we're kind of in this weird crossover where, you know, I guess we we go with the Gregorian calendar. But I always feel like this is quite a nice time for kind of reflecting and having a bit of a pause and just it's not for me, it doesn't feel like a new year. And I'm completely fine with that. It hasn't for the last kind of few and I wonder what your feelings are on this. And mm. I feel like I think it's in bulk um, is the is the next kind of wheel of the year. So we've just had winter solstice on the 21st mm. of December. And then I think the next one is um, in bulk. I think I'm saying that right. But I think and I think that's around. End of January, early, early February. And that to me is kind of like, mm. you know, we're just sort of peaking up. It's kind of like an inner spring where you're just like hatching for your egg, a bit like where you're at today. Um, but that to me yeah. feels more like New Year. So I kind of, I kind of like, I have mm. a few things I like to do for like New Year rituals, but mostly it's kind of a time of reflection. Um, mm. And I'm, I kind of don't really start my New Year now. It doesn't feel, for me, it's like the middle mm. of winter. It's like, yeah. you know, death. <laughs> and it's like, why on earth? <laughs> Why on earth do I want to set Damn. goals now? Are you kidding me? Like it's the middle of blooming. It yeah. would be like being in my in my inner winter and being like, "Well, I'm going to start all my goals now." <laughs> you know? um, yeah, these are all so I don't know things I want to do with my life. Yeah, go. No. It's really really <laughs> dark outside now. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything so else is sleeping in nature. Everything mm. else is like taking yeah. a break, and the humans are like. Let's go. <laughs> Fireworks, go. Yeah. Yeah. Please stop. <laughs> it doesn't feel natural to me at no. all. Um, and yeah, I, I think for astrology, cool. astrologers and human design and everything, I think I think they all tend to go with the the calendar that was used before, whatever that is. <laughs> it's like the twenty second of January is kind of the start. So oh. I just find it really interesting. Um, 
Is that kind of yeah, like so... Chinese New Year as well? Isn't that sort of? I want to say, yeah, because Korean New Year is also around, it's like Lunar New Year, they call it. So it's kind of a similar thing. And I can't remember when it is, but it's, I want to say it's around slash slightly after Chinese New Year, I think, from what I can remember. I think that's a crossover with that. It's probably more linked to nature than Mm. New Year. Yeah, yeah. I think it's to do with, and I don't really know enough about it, but I think think it's to do with, um, it should be, 13 moon cycles instead of 12 we've like made it 12 so it should be naturally 13 which again Mm. is the number 13 (laughs) you know that's that whole the stuff about yeah like you know the reclaiming of women and also I when I was when I was reading this I was like oh yeah I remember when I was planning my last um Friday the 13th reclaim event that I was like oh I must remember that January has a Friday the 13th so I would like to do something for that in a couple of weeks yeah this podcast will be out afterwards but there'll be something cool yeah yeah I think like a cool yoga thing or something but anyway so I was just thinking and I know <laughs> last week well, I was thinking um because I was because my um inner winter my bleed came on um boxing day and I was kind of mm. like in this bit of um you know that kind of bit between like Christmas day a boxing day and then like New Year's and I was like this yeah. is the void you know the void that we kind of talk about <laughs> with inner winter where you're like yeah. I'm not quite like it, yeah. I'm not quite there but I'm, also, I'm in my own bubble and like time yeah. doesn't really exist I was like this is the yeah. void like if I had to give like a bit like when we had our uh, um I think it would have been episode five where we looked at the the Chinese um Indian summer and kind of the Chinese medicine mm-hmm. like traditional Chinese medicine mm-hmm. that was kind of like the late autumn and I was like oh it's all like it's all reflected in nature and I just thought that was really cool I was like oh my god I'm in the void in the void yeah. it's like a void it is such a so, it's such a it's such a weird week it's such like a blur week because mm. we were um you know the family here we were like we were kind of like pretty chilled but we were like oh maybe we could go do this oh it's closed maybe we could go mm-hmm. do this oh it closes at 2 p.m <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah like maybe we could go do this oh it's not open till January you know it's yeah. it is like that it's like you just yeah. have to stop but people are on holiday so there's people like Places can be very busy, but there's actually not that much going on. So yeah, like, okay, yeah. well we'll just stay local. That's cool. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's like a, it was kind of like a reminder that this is deep winter, and if, it, like like I said, all the rest of nature is kind of having a break. <laughs> mm. you have a bit of rest a bit, and downtime. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it reminds well, me how it's so... all mirrored yeah and and it also reminded me because I yeah so I must have started on yeah so I started on this like uh three days before two days before New Year's Eve no wait Mm. no one day before New Year's Eve I beg your pardon Mm. with some spotting before um my period was trying really hard to come for about two days and I was like (laughs) just do it (laughs) Just be ready. <laughs> it was actually a very hard transition because you know I was like mm. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly over the yeah. edge. I'm not quite, and I just got to the point where I was like, I just want to have my period. Yeah. Um, so, but what was I going to say? Yeah. So it was like that week I was in deep autumn, about to go into winter, and we're in this deep winter time where you know not that not like it's not like a really active time in nature and also a lot of stuff is just closed because because it's you know it's dark and people on holiday um and I found it very frustrating actually I found Mm. it really frustrating and I was like to just sit and like I have you know a pile of books that I and I love reading Mm. and I didn't I didn't reach for a book and I just got really frustrated and like I had all this time and I've been given mm. signals by my body and the darkness and all of that to be yeah. like, what else can you do? Just, you know, cozy mm. up. Um, and I, I was like, really frustrated. frustrated. Yeah. So I'd love mm. to like, I feel like that's something I really need to work on in my transition days. It's just like mm. to sit with things, you know, and be okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. feel like this. Okay. Just sit with it. Like it will be fine eventually yeah Yeah, it's kind of like oh I need to feel good I need to feel good or I need to feel like not uncomfortable and it's like no we we have to do we do have to feel a bit uncomfortable sometimes yeah (laughs) but I don't want to transition days days are like now I know when they're happening 
I, I, I can feel myself getting angsty or irritated or whatever, depending what the transition mm. is. And, and now I, I know what it is, but so now I'm like, okay, awareness is the first step, right? So now I mm. can, I can do something about it or, or not do something about it, like just be okay with it. Yeah. But I, but I just, I get so transition days really frustrate me. I feel they're really very, challenging, I think. Yeah. yeah. Challenging. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are. I, I think I had my, um, my uh if I glance to the side it's because I have my my notes Julia knows this but I'm like (laughs) notes um I had my day five used to be a really big challenge for me I Mm -hmm. used to and I'm not sure what it was I noticed it was before it's probably about the lead up to um all the stuff happening we've been about 2020 um I don't know if it was happening as much before then so I think it was definitely 2020 and um every every single cycle day five so this was before I was diagnosed um with ADHD that was 2021 and so I wasn't taking meds and I say this because when I started taking the meds I didn't have an issue with cycle day five and I I can't remember it's probably in a in a journal at home I love journaling so much but sometimes I look at my notes and I cannot read my handwriting I'm no. so diligent about journaling every day and then I'm like I can't yeah. actually read my writing sometimes but it will be in there and um <laughs> I can't remember if it was I remember having um my meds and then after a, you know a couple of cycles I was like oh hang on I'm not having the cycle day five issue anymore so I don't mm. know if it was because of the meds helps to balance whatever was going on out but I feel like it was um it, I don't know if it was just like a very and people can have this where it's you, you get quite a quick um you have like the dip of estrogen and it comes in kind of quite quickly. So I don't know if it was that and I was very sensitive to it um, because I have heard of, I've read read about that being a bit of an issue for some people. I think just in the same way that the dip of it can be. Um, And it was just really weird because it was like, no matter if I had um, exercised or not, um, if I had had a really good night's sleep or a really crap night's sleep or if I'd had caffeine or not ca- like it didn't really mm. matter like what I had what I would do so I was experimenting because I had it for like you know over, over a year I was like what is this it was just like this horrible this just anxiety it was really bizarre every sing- single time on day five so I think for me mm. um, if we're kind of looking at a 28 day cycle of having it would be to, uh, like sort of cycle day six twelve like 20 and 28 would be your kind of your crossover days your transition days so that for me would work because I my cycles tend to be 24 to 26 days they're a bit longer in the winter at the moment they're 26 so that would kind of make sense um and I also can't remember if because I do I do remember when I had my I've had two uh, COVID vaccines and I know when I had the first one it really messed up my cycles for quite a while um and that was really not very fun but I think this was pre- a precursor to that so it was just um yeah that was my kind of thing with with day, with day five and I think that for me was a transition day um and I wonder if I mean I'm yeah. on cycle day eight today this could be a transition of spring to summer it's a weird one I didn't sleep as well as I'd like um we went out for a nice walk it was a really beautiful day I've eaten at slightly different times I'm a bit like dehydrated so I'm like oh my just is this a crossover day today or is it like an ADHD didn't do half the other things <laughs> Yeah. Kind of day. you know so it's, it's yeah. interesting trying to pit it down but it can definitely help to um navigate especially if you're finding the say like that cycle day five I was like just don't assume going into it that it will be difficult this month and then it was you know I was like mate I just won't assume because again you know it doesn't matter if one cycle was like that it might be different on the next one you know yeah. your body can change all the time and yeah. so I was trying not to assume but <sighs> That was yeah. a challenge. So that that for me kind of piqued my interest with the crossover days, definitely. Okay. Um, but it's better now. It's better now, yeah. I, I don't know. I really don't know why. I don't know if that's uh, the medications, even something out that, that wasn't there or... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just remember being like, oh, you know, Cycle A5 has not been an issue this month. And I was like, was it an issue last mm-hmm. month? And then naturally I couldn't remember because, you know, life slash scatty brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um but yeah so that kind of yeah so that sort of went went away I guess it might might have been some awareness there of doing some other I don't really know but it was um yeah that was a that was a challenge and um I think I mean in my notes I've kind of got you know transitions by nature are often tricky to navigate um and if you have ADHD you'll be especially aware of this I'm sure other um health conditions or um you know various other conditions will have an effect on that as well but Mm. I know that with ADHD the transitions is really tricky so Mm. things like 
kind of how can we help ourselves in transition time so like sort of doing the prep laying the things out so things like someone said on a um on a facebook group um that i'm in and she she'd made a comment and she said something about this things really work for me what i've done is i've um kind of made like a little ritual for stuff so she was like I, rather than just being like brush my teeth that's quite like a I don't know, it's, a, it's a, just a weird transition. It's a bit like getting dressed. It's a bit like, oh, uh, you know, you've got to decide what to wear. Blah, blah, blah. You know, there's lots of steps to it. Mm. And so she kind of would just lay stuff out. So she was like, I have my, like, my floss, my, like, toothbrush, you know, or my tongue scrape or whatever, or my, or, you know, whatever. And it's just kind of there and it's ready. And it's kind of like a little mini ritual. And she just said for her that kind of just eased her into it. And it was less of a, like, a weird, I don't know, just a, you know, a weird structural thing um a bit like I guess you know when people are like I'm going to start going running in the morning and they'll like lay their clothes out the night before you know it's kind of like (laughs) how can we prep how can we make that an easier transition um and I think partly because it's there but also it's just it's one less maybe decision to make so I think the transitions I'm still learning about that from the ADHD um kind of perspective but I have noticed like yeah maybe for me when I mean I've just had a few months off work but when I'll go go back to work and I'm working in my room it's kind of easier to shut down the computer or or just leave the room do either a bit of yoga or just go for a walk just to like de-work because otherwise transitioning in between that is is tricky so it's kind of having those bookends I guess um and I think when we have um yeah things like this pop up where we have those transition times like how can we kind of make it easier are we are we tending to ourselves um I mean if you've had like a rough transition from in a winter to in a spring maybe you didn't sort of like rest and digest in in a winter maybe you're or maybe also you're you're leaving a part a season that you really like and you feel really at home in and you have to like come out of the egg you know into the world um and show up in a way that you or not necessarily show up in a way but there's a different there's different you know beautiful things that come to that season but maybe you don't feel as at home in it as you do in you know your inner winter for example so mm, it's interesting it is I think I think the, the parallel with life is a really good one because we do we're constantly transitioning between tasks like you say but it's so sometimes they're so minute that like if you acknowledged every transition you'd never do anything um mm. <laughs> but sometimes yeah. in bigger things like um I used to work in a place and it was a very um it was a quite <laughs> I guess a hippie place to work really and they were all about um arriving like you had to make sure that you arrived so you'd come mm. in from wherever you'd come in from And we were having a team meeting or a team gathering or a team whatever. And everyone was coming in from a different place to the meeting place. And there was always time to arrive. And I really like that idea of just arriving. Like arriving Mm. being a thing. It's not just Mm. like you've arrived and boom, you're into the next thing. They just needed an acknowledgement that um, people were, like I know you've been stuck on the tube or you'd been mm. or you've been where well, like to just like transition from that stuff or you'd like you know I don't know like had like loads of people around You're all kind of come from different head spaces aren't you and exactly. it's kind of bringing it all when yeah. I when I was doing and... my um yoga teacher training in Korea the teacher would get us to do the three oms at the beginning of class and that was to just kind of bring us all into the same headspace and by the third om you were a bit more together and then by the end of like the day because it was like six hour day by the end of that you do your om and it was so beautiful you just do one to wrap up and it was like yeah it was really in tune so it's (laughs) yeah and it's kind of the same and he would say about the the arriving yeah Mm. but I think that and you think like okay this was like this is a very unique place I worked at. Like, I don't think many places will, will do that, but they were very, they were like quite spiritual and quite, you know, about indigenous teachings and, and all of that. Mm-hmm. So that knowledge kind of fed into how they practice work, I guess. So that was pretty mm-hmm. cool, but you know, I don't know many places that would give time for that. And initially I remember like, you know, the first couple of times I thought we're well, wasting time we're wasting time mm-hmm. we could be we could be doing stuff and and yeah. after you do it a couple of times you're like oh my god I need to arrive everywhere yes. you know? <laughs> I love that yeah I love it. 
So now I often think of it, you know, if I'm rushing somewhere, yeah. which often our family is known for being late. So yeah. often <laughs> yeah. we're rushing and you get somewhere yeah. and you don't, if I don't have time to arrive, I really notice it now. Yeah. I'm like, I just need a minute. I just need a minute. Mm. It's like, even if it just take off your coat, you know, like I just need a minute instead of yeah. <laughs> throw everything down. Okay. I'm ready. Like I just need a minute. Yeah. To and I think, I feel like that is transition days. Transition days mm. you're arriving into the next season. Mm. And we don't give it time. We're just like, boom, I'm wasting time. No. I need to be in the next, I need to be in the next season so I can be in the next season so I can be in the next oh man it's exhausting yeah. but I love that like mm. it's almost that reminder like oh I need to arrive yeah <laughs> I, I love that I need to arrive. yeah it reminds me of when we were looking at um the what was it was it stop drop and roll we went with yeah Indian <laughs> summer the stop drop and roll and then I also had in brackets the great pause but I think the yes. great pause is is the tr- there's the crossover days because that's that yeah. needing the time to arrive and having that you know that pause and it doesn't have to be it is a pause it's not like the great yeah. stop I mean, no. you don't have to stop for like 20 minutes it's just no. like having a pause be, and gathering it can yourself be a minute it can be five it can be mm. ten it can be 30 seconds 30 seconds yeah Whatever you need <laughs> yeah I love that yeah I like that I think that's a good um yeah I'm kind of starting to sow some seeds for in bulk of like what I want to focus on this year and I was like I'm just gonna like take some I did it last year I just took a few weeks to like just because my brain was like not here I was like well it's, it's okay it's like it's an ADHD thing of like really really quick with like blah, 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 getting all the information but then you're like you process it so slow and then in, like three <laughs> weeks I'll be like oh, I'm ready to set my new years now you know and I'm like no that's okay it also kind of works more with nature so like that's fine like yeah. that's the work you want to do so that's okay but for a long time I was like why do I not feel ready and it's like well yeah. we just had like the splurge of Christmas and then we're like here we are it's new year <laughs> like of course there's no arrival time you know like so we can arrive now um yeah I love I love that what a great yeah what great practice and it's just so good of like yeah how you can use your spiritual practices or woo woo stuff and how you can actually make that tangible and physical and how it actually really really benefits um you like you say because it doesn't matter you're not gonna what else are you gonna get done in 30 seconds like you'll probably be way more productive if you just take you know it's a bit like with meditation it's like well I'm gonna be way better at this day if I just take five minutes to meditate it doesn't have to be a big yeah. one but my day yeah. will be vastly better which I haven't been doing I had my I did over a year of meditation every day and I stopped oh. the, doing that in like December and I was like no so that's my thing yeah. like today I'm like right I've got to hop yeah. back onto it just because it feels good you know um yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, it's not yeah I think it's yeah. not wasted time is the Mm-mm. is the big thing for me yes like, yeah it's, like it's just not something not that we're used time. to yeah yeah and and actually now you know there's all this neuroscience research that is also saying um I think it's like there's three things that will help your brain that you can do every day and one is get out and move preferably in the morning preferably outside Mm. um but just move your body because it pumps the blood up to your brain right so then you you have a better day uh, meditation is another and then I can't remember the third practice but I just thought wow this is neuroscience this isn't just this isn't like mm. it's not woo. It's not some like woo-woo. out there concept. As you said. Of, like yeah. we can do this. It's like even with the yeah. yogas, it's like well, it's all esoteric sciences. It's like there's yeah. a lot of like there's so many levels to it. It just yeah. you know we sometimes just make it sound a bit like woo, and it's like it's really not. <laughs> it's actually really not. <laughs> yeah, it is grounded in the secret. It's grounded <laughs> yeah. in science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, 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 um, it is amazing. You know, yeah, these things are mm. to, to help, but we just we've gotten ourselves in such a messy rush mm, yeah, society. yeah so yeah. we just don't yeah but we just don't really practice appreciate it, it. Mm. yeah no, so transition yeah. days for me are like I think that's probably a big thing because because I love what you say Sorsh is like bleed on bleed on it mm. I have to keep reminding myself when I'm on my period and stuff and it's amazing because stuff comes to me it does yeah to you sorry I should say generally people who have periods stuff will if you let it and that, so this has been like emerging for me I'm like oh transition days I need to mm. I not I need sorry I would like to work with them more just rather than be yeah. by them 
you know yeah it's yeah good. yeah definitely yeah and it also it takes a little bit you know it takes a while because the, the yeah. seasons are easier to kind of to navigate yeah. and the transition days it's you know we're getting more and more kind of refined with it so it's um yeah it does take I mean I'm still yeah I'm still working out my you know my transition days and if I don't have a diary near me I couldn't tell you off the top of my head oh you know I know day five was because it was such a horrible feeling every day five but I couldn't like tell you so much now which is probably good it probably means those transition days have been easier um because they don't always have to be you know difficult but they probably will feel a bit wobbly and a little bit like some people as well really struggle with um spring and autumn if we just do a quick uh owed to transitional seasons with because we've got the acting um kind of the the action the main events at ovulation we've got in our in a summer and then um I always think of it as like a north and a south pole and then in the winter we've got our menstruation so you kind of have like a fixed thing that like ideally if we're healthy those things should be happening right we know that if we're underweight or if we've had I don't know a lot of stress or something's going on we're, we're probably not going to ovulate so therefore there's probably something that we need to really resolve in the body and heal because we need that to, I don't know, let's just say, for example, for our bone health and bone density and things like that, it all has that knock on effect in with the other areas of our, our body and our vital signs. So kind mm. of we have those kind of main events as like these fixed poles, but then the spring and the autumn can be a little bit trickier. Um, <laughs> yeah, to kind of changing. navigate a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I guess, I guess, yeah, spring with that day five, that was quite tricky for a while. And then um, autumn with the PMDD stuff, that was quite um, tricky. Mm-hmm. For me now, I kind of, I mean, uh, menstruation I like because I, I just really try and deep breast. Um, mm. But even this even this one on cycle day two, it was like the day after Boxing Day. And I was like, yeah, I'll go for a hike. And I was like, what the hell? Am I? No, <laughs> I'm in so much pain. So I was like, oh, nature. And I was like, oh, my God, the cramps. And I'd had like painkillers, you know, and I was like, Sasha, what are you doing? Like, this is cycle day two. Like, you know, so I still have to catch myself. So I'm like, yeah, cool. And I'm like, no, like, no, um, no, you know. And I'm, I'm so busy kind of thinking, oh, I've got to watch out for ovulation because I'll have all of the energy. But I'll be like, ah, I won't sleep and it's scattery. But actually, it's like, again, it's trying not to assume that. But also, it's like, there's all the other days, you know, to be aware of. Not in a way that we have to be like, we must control it. But it's also like, so cycle day two. I get what you're thinking because you're like nature. You love nature. But also, like let's not do that hike that's not that's gonna feel good <laughs> maybe on day three or four yeah a yeah. little one you know um <laughs> but yeah I think when we don't when we don't have an awareness of our crossover days they can really they can feel like a little wobble or it can feel like the kind of the rug is sort of to paraphrase from Maisie Hill's book um period power mm-hmm. it can kind of feel like the rug is just whipped out from under your feet so it can be really challenging um, and I guess the same, yeah, with those seasons, with the the spring and the and the autumn, they can be a little bit because you probably feel very vulnerable as well. If you listen to our in a spring episode, we kind of speak about well, all the other ones we've done, and we've we've spoken about the the seasons because I think it's great wow. to have that understanding before you look at crossover days. Um, but it's um, yeah, it just kind of gives you that that anchor. Um, and I guess as well, like I'm just having a little look at my notes, but I also think. Yeah, my personal experience, you can you can feel maybe lots of anxiety or sometimes it's the other way and you can feel a bit more sort of numb. Um, and I think they, the crossover days really kind of occur when we feel at odds with leaving, like I said, kind of earlier, like leaving whatever season we're in. So, and it might also be that if you feel at home in your, yeah. and this is to quote um, Red School with the Via Positiva and the Via Negativa, and we'll do a podcast on that, um, I think maybe in the next couple of ones, because it will explain a few things. But I know it sounds like negative, it sounds like a negative bad thing. But what it really is, is that um, your inner, you kind of have your inner spring and your inner summer. If you think of it being like, you know, those are like the the, the periods of womanhood where it's like, you know, um, you know, you're celebrated, you're like, in your inner spring, you're maiden. And then you're like, you know, ovulating and everyone can just impregnate you and you'll be amazing and you'll grow the world. And it's very, you know, it's all very like wonderful. And that's kind of the via positiva. It's kind of that almost like the extrovert sort of celebrated outputting productivity sort of, you know, everything we sort of celebrate in society. Yeah. Whereas the via negativa is more of the kind of introvert reflecting um, the inner winter wow. and the inner um, autumn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you might find that you feel very, um, it depends, maybe depends where you are in your life cycle, depends on what's happening, um, you know, in, yeah, in, in your, in your world, depends what's happening, like in your life at the t- time as well, but you might kind of feel, it might be worth sort of asking yourself, where do you feel more at home? Do you even know? Cause for me, I definitely felt more at home 
I'd say in like the, the summer kind of stuff for a long time. And then when I really started doing my cycle practice, I was like, oh, I actually really like, even though PMDD has been really challenging, I really like that in autumn, I really like that reflective time. It's calmer because I've ovulated. So I'm not like, ah, I've got to do all the things. <laughs> um, and so it's just, you know, a bit more like soothing. And when I let myself yeah. rest yeah. in my, in a winter, for me, for me, it's a very much a, I'm allowed to let myself rest now. So it's called, sort of like a permission slip to myself. So I think that's what's really helped. Whereas before I just didn't have that, you know, permission slip. I think it really helps. And I realized, oh, I actually really like the, I really like the um, via negativa time. And actually a lot of the women that also did the, the menstrual leadership program, they are also saying, oh, I actually really like this. It's just not celebrated as much. And so we maybe feel like we can't do it or we feel like we should be more productive. You know, and there's ways to be productive without, outputting stuff all the time um so it's kind of yeah do you even know your preferred season or has it shifted as you've got older or maybe you had kids and then it shifted you know maybe you like you enjoyed this one thing and then you had children and it's different or I don't know you've got a new job and you know so it's it's interesting to see um that and then also kind of leading off to that you know sort of fertility issues as well if you if you want to um get pregnant and you're not then having your in a winter come the start of your bleed that might be really really difficult that might have like grief it might be upsetting yeah. you know quite rage inducing or sad or disempowering equally if you find yourself you know having children um you you might kind of be grieving a life that you thought you'd have or um you know maybe you're not feeling ready for it or yeah there's lots of different mm. um there's yeah. lots of different ways it can kind of play out um julia has it popped up with a time thingy yet Yes, How we long have we got? about seven minutes. So okay, cool. Concluding then, just perhaps. to kind of wrap up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think kind of to wrap up that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can kind of notice different time. You know, different kind of crossover days and and times in our life. For for me, I really notice in my sort of late in autumn to early winter. There's a, a kind of crossover day from like autumn to winter. That's when I'm like oh someone that's kind of when I I really kind of I'm like oh, I'd like to have a partner because I feel like I'm honestly just single so much of my of my life <laughs> I really enjoy that but then sometimes I'm like yeah. oh sometimes I just want someone to like give me a foot massage rather than me having to do it myself <laughs> or like run me a bath or like make me dinner you know yeah, um, yeah. I'll pay you back in you know in a summer you know but it's kind of like <laughs> that's when I'm kind of feeling maybe more um exhausted or more prone to the overwhelm um than than usual and I try and really kind of sit with that and just, you know, love on myself a little bit deeper. Um, Mm. But I also try and have like, you know, have that prep in place. So I've kind of got like, yeah, make sure I've got some delicious, healthy dishes in my freezer that I've either sort of lovingly prepared in my inner summer or I've, you know, bought Mm. from Marks and Spencers. (laughs) Um, I'll have (laughs) like, you know, make sure the the salts and the rose oil is all sort of topped up for my baths. Um, Lots of mirror work, self-massage affirmation words EFT in front of the mirror um and just you know being like you know mind is that you're worthy and whole with or without a partner right so I think having Mm -hmm. having that knowledge of the cycle of awareness is so important and those crossover days because they can like Maisie Hill says they can really you know rip the rug off from under your feet um yeah and it just it just helps us to know it helps us to prepare to navigate um and it's just better for yeah mental physical health work relationships home you know if you know why you're feeling a bit wobbly you know then it's just more, again it's that having that as an anchor um yeah yeah and it's Any... it's like it's I don't know for me it's just that it's okay like that's the phrase mm. I'm like you know I look at my little book and I'm like oh it's okay <laughs> yeah. really uh, okay <laughs> yeah we kind of like to know where we are we kind of like to have a bit of a blueprint I think you know yeah. in this crazy world so oh. yeah <laughs> um definitely I have if people need a bit of a hand getting started if they're not used to their tracking or if they're new to it I've got the ready steady chart um free guide that's on my email that will be I don't know somewhere in the show notes wherever you see this on YouTube or Spotify or various places um and that's yep. free and it's a nice little video as well. It's like a 30 minute video and it kind of goes through a bit of, a, um, yeah, the hormones and all this fun stuff that happens throughout the cycle. Um, and that will just help you. Yeah, you just really, it's just, again, it's just starting to chart. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, a bit more about your seasons and the crossover days and, you know, it comes slowly. Um, is there anything else you want to add to Julia? No, I don't think so. No. That was a, I think that was a great discussion. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm going to read it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm quite excited to practice my arriving. The, the great. I'm gonna have this one as the great pause. I like that because I was like, oh, I just didn't quite work with the last one, and now I'm like, ah, this is yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think that's a great practice. I'm gonna try and do that. I think in January, whilst I'm in this like crossover transition time, this is a good time to practice the great pause. So um, yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So we will right. see everyone in the next episode. Um, if you like this, please leave a rating, a good one. Um, <laughs> way that you see it share it with friends share it with family and um we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of free flow all right all right bye